what is Alarm Phone? That's a, that's a good question. Uh, well, it's a network, a uh, transnational network that is committed uh, to uh, the freedom of movement for, for all. And I think it's also important to add um, the, the, the freedom to stay. What we do uh, most practically is um, we hand out information about safety at sea, that's those kind of crossings where people cross. Our focus is on the Mediterranean crossing, supporting people making that crossing. So it starts um, on the south side of the Mediterranean border. Then, of course, the, the name comes from being a 24 hour hotline. You can phone the number um, from the very on your crossing. And the alarm phone came into existence because of this kind of left to die cases that were happening. Uh, back in 2014, 15, uh, to, so to be, a, be a witness and a, another actor that can put pressure on the Coast Guard. The alarm phones, one of the alarm phones strengths as a network, as I said earlier, I think is, is this ability to work despite the barrier that has been created by the politics of migration uh, and, and to try to, to bring that barrier down and to, to be as close as possible uh, to people who are on the move. You know, it's an interesting project. It's one I think that could only could only exist in the contemporary age, precisely because it's relying on the kind of technology that everyone is now relying on with coronavirus to stay in touch with their friends. The the real issues I think are uh, are, are that um, particularly in the central Mediterranean, uh, the so much of the rescue relies on NGO rescue boats. Which have all been impounded uh, and, and locked down. So th is is making the the crossing from Libya, which was already probably the most dangerous crossing, exponentially more dangerous. So I think one of the challenges that we face is 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 around quarantine and what that means, because the imposition of quarantine uh, by governments is assuming, perhaps naively, perhaps cynically, probably a bit of both, that everybody. Uh, fits into the pattern of how they want citizens to be, which is people who are stationary, who are, you know, who have a home, who have a job. Uh, and they, you know, you can be told to stay at home, but if you don't have a home, what are you, what are you meant to do? And um, if you have a job contract, I don't know what's happening in Italy, but in the UK, there's talk about, you know, providing state support for people who have, had, you know, been forced out of their jobs and, and, all sorts of other sort of schemes to keep the economy going and stop people starving. But if you're working in the underground economy because you don't have papers, where does where does this leave you? Um, and I think it shows. I think you know, for me, what the virus shows is 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 the fiction that the world is is static and stationary and that and behaves according to the according to these laws, right? Well, what it what it demonstrates once again is is that these laws are normative. These laws are saying this is how things should be, this is how you should be, and if you are like that, then the system will work for you. And if you're not like that, the system's going to punish you. Um, and of course, what the virus shows is that's ridiculous. You can't run a world like that because the human population is is diverse and has different aims and agendas and wants different things. And and that's great. That's wonderful and and really to be celebrated. You know, and, and of course we're all vulnerable, right? Society doesn't just include the people that that behave themselves according to the way the bourgeois powers that be expect them to behave. I mean, it works well for me. I'm a nice bourgeois person who behaves as bourgeois people are expected to behave, but not everyone's like that, right? So, uh, and of course, I'm, I'm, everyone is then put at risk. The, the, the refugee camps in Mariah, I think, are really, or less also in Mariah, are really clear examples. This is it's just an infection zone waiting to happen, and it will infect everybody else. Um, there's no, you know, so we need, I think we need to be getting the message out really strongly and really clearly that, that, that this European idea that the, that the state protects the citizen and the property and everybody else is undesirable and can be kept out by force is, is a fiction as well as racist and all sorts of other things. Uh, and, and these kind of politics and the policies need to be, need to be dismantled and uh, dismantled now uh, and never brought back. And I think you know, the leverage is to say, well, you've got to dismantle these policies now or you're going to have a whole load of homeless people on the streets starving, spreading your virus. Um, 
So you need to dismantle them temporarily. That's the that's the opportunity, and then never bring them back and make sure they don't come back when the plague or whatever uh, passes. Um, so, but I mean that's very very optimistic. But I think that's part of what we that's the message we have to have, and that's that's how we have to be working and, and aiming to do. I think.